Hello everyone and welcome to Moments in Medicine Live, hosted on Nebraska Medicine's Facebook page every week. I'm Christine Buman. Uh, today I'm actually joined by Nebraska Medicine Neurologist Dr. Pierre Fayad. Uh, May is actually nat National Stroke Awareness Month, uh, so we're going to be talking about stroke risk factors and the things that you can do to mini minimize your risk. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So nice to have you. Couple of things to remind you, um, viewers of, as we get going. Um, as we begin every discussion, we do want to remind you that the conversation um, in this chat is to be utilized for informational purposes only. For specific questions about your medical condition or your treatment plan, please reach out to your doctor directly. And the other thing is that always remember that you can ask questions in this live chat for us to ask Dr. Fayad at any time. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump in, but high level, what is a neurologist and what does a neurologist do? Well, thank you. A neurologist uh, is a physician who is able to evaluate patients with neurologic symptoms, uh, decide what type of uh, disease or problem they have, uh, order specific tests, and decide what treatment what condition they have and what treatment they need. Refer them to surgery if necessary, or but primarily it's medical treatment and there are some interventions that a neurologist does as well. Yeah, and so like we said, May is National Stroke Month. Stroke is something that you work with. So yeah. what exactly is a stroke and um, what are some of the types of stroke that you can see? So bringing back, so there are among neurologists, stroke neurologists who are dedicated to treating patients with stroke. And uh, a stroke is uh, uh, a permanent damage to the brain that uh, happens because a blood vessel has either been blocked or ruptured. And uh, there, there are different types of stroke based on what happens to the blood vessel. So if the blood vessel is blocked, we call it an ischemic stroke where there is a lack of blood to an area of the brain that causes the damage. Uh, and that represents about 85% of all strokes. The hemorrhagic strokes uh, are, or the bleeding strokes are where a blood ves vessel ruptures and the blood flows out and destroys the brain around it, resulting in the damage. Okay. And then within each one of those, there are different types based on what causes the problem. Right, so very, yeah. very thorough practice for yeah. sure. So, um, you know, timing is everything when it comes to stroke care. Um, and so what are some of the signs and symptoms that a passerby would recognize of someone that is having a stroke? Yeah, that's a good question. And the most important question for people to recognize, stroke is not a mystery. A lot of people think having a heart attack is a stroke, but it's not. Uh, so the, the most frequent ways in which a stroke presents are a sudden, usually all the symptoms are suddenly happen, and they can be sudden weakness on one side or the other, okay. sudden numbness on one side or the other, sudden loss of vision in one eye or the other or to one side or the other, a sudden uh, difficulty speaking, understanding speech, or having slurred speech, um, and then having a sudden loss of balance or uh, the worst headache that someone has ever had. So those are the biggest one, but for someone who doesn't know, doesn't remember all of these, it's important to remember what is FAST. And FAST is, represents face, arm, speech, and time. Okay. That's an easy thing to remember. And face meaning when you suspect someone is having a stroke, uh, ask them to smile and see if their smile is normal. Okay. Ask them to lift their arms and see if one arm droops uh, lower than the other. Ask them to speak or say words or do something for you and if they can't or having problems then their speech is affected. And if they have any of those then it is a good red flag 
for a stroke, you need to know when it happened because that's an important time mm -hmm. is, is the issue. And then calling 911 is the last Maybe. thing you need to do. So anytime you feel these things or have someone uh, in front of you have that, uh, then that's what you need to do. Sure. So you can recognize that you're exactly. having a stroke yeah. as it's happening. You can look in the mirror. So okay. you don't have to wait for someone to examine you. You can look in the mirror and do all these things as sure. well. Great information. Thank you. Right. Um, you know, I think in the recent news, mm -hmm. Luke Perry and John Singleton have most recently suffered from a stroke. Yeah. They're both fairly young. I always thought that this was something that happened kind of in the younger or the older demographic. Is yeah. that the case? or? Well, typically stroke is more common in... Uh, at older ages. Uh, so after the age of 65, the risk of stroke doubles with every decade of age. Wow. So the older you are, the higher likelihood you are to have a stroke. And of course, we have an aging population, so we're going to see more and more strokes. However, over the last couple decades, there has been a trend for an increased risk of stroke in younger population. And when we talk about younger population, of course, uh, people who are less than 50 years old. Because after the age of 50, all the other risk factors may be responsible for stroke. But in a younger age group, where there is no diabetes, there is no high blood pressure, there is no heart problems, why would they have a stroke? Well, they have different ways. So you can have dissection of the arteries that lead to the brain. You can have uh, bleeding in the brain from use of drugs. You can have uh, a clot that has traveled from the heart to the brain. Uh, so there are many other ways that could cause a stroke at a younger age. And we're seeing more of that primarily because in the younger population there is, uh, there is a trend to be more sedentary with the use of uh, electronics, tablets, uh, phones, and so on. There is less exercise, more obesity, uh, more uh, high cholesterol, and so on. And all of these will lead to stroke. Uh, unfortunately, also the use of drugs, uh, narcotics, uh, uh, and illegal drug use is on the rise as well. And all of this is adding uh, fuel to the fire. Sure. So we're seeing much more strokes in the younger population. Sure. You mentioned uh, dissection of the arteries. Yeah. What causes that to happen? So dissections sometimes uh, is caused by uh, an injury, mm -hmm. uh, a fall or hurting someone's neck. Sometimes it can be caused by neck manipulations. Uh, some people do their own neck cracking. I was going to say, cracking your neck. neck. Exactly. That's what came to and my that mind. can do it, yeah. Uh, or having someone else crack their neck. I think it's important to remember that there is a risk associated with, with that, that, and especially in the younger individuals. Yeah, I will definitely be more mindful <laughs> now when it's like, oh, I need to adjust. Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about some of, you know, the risk factors um, associated. Are there any others, and what things can people maybe do to reduce their risk yeah. of a stroke? So the most important is to recognize what could put someone at risk for stroke. Of course, we talked about age, and the older you are, the higher the risk. But in addition to that, there is high blood pressure, is the most common risk of stroke, and it's responsible for 80% of all strokes. Uh, diabetes is a big one as well. High cholesterol. Uh, heart problems, if someone uh, has, uh, has had a heart attack or so on, that can raise the risk of stroke. But more importantly is a ab specific abnormal rhythm in the heart called atrial fibrillation that uh, is associated with a high risk of stroke. And uh, so these are the big ones. In addition to that, we have habits that increase our risk for stroke. And we are talking about smoking is a big one. Um, less exercise or physical inactivity. 
excessive alcohol drinking, especially binge alcohol drinking, uh, all raise the risk of stroke. Okay. And of course, we talked about the legal drugs, which by themselves form another risk of stroke. Okay. So when you know that you have these, you need to monitor them very carefully yes. and not say, well, I checked my blood pressure today and then it's fine, then I forget about it. But that's not the way it goes. Medications need to be adjusted. You need to follow on them and so on. And if you don't have any of those, you need to know what is your family history. history. So does high blood pressure run in the family? Does high cholesterol run in the family? Does diabetes run in the family? If those do, then you are at risk for developing those. So even if you don't have them, you need to keep a watchful eye on them so that you can prevent a stroke before it happens. Because strokes don't necessarily run hereditary. It's more the risk That's factors, correct. right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, at Nebraska Medicine, we have a certified comprehensive stroke center. Um, can you describe a little bit what that means and what different, differentiates our mm -hmm. level of care? So as you know, in our uh, country, we all want to know what capabilities mm -hmm. one has and uh, in anything, right? Uh, what is the quality? What, uh, who, who told us that an independent uh, qualification? And uh, stroke has evolved tremendously. Because of the time, the expertise that is needed and the organizational needs to provide all the care, provide all the screening and provide it seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and so on. There have been several levels of stroke care in different hospitals. And starting with a stroke ready hospital to a primary care stroke hospital, primary stroke uh, hospital to a thrombectomy capable hospital. And at the end of, of those is the comprehensive stroke center, which is essentially the top of the line uh, certification, meaning that this center has uh, all the capabilities needed for managing, diagnosing, and treating stroke acutely and in prevention. And, um, and from there, you know, there are different capabilities at the lower level. Our job as the only comprehensive stroke center is to provide not only care for all the patients that come here, but also for caring for stroke throughout the state and throughout the region and supporting other hospitals in providing stroke care to the best they can. Yes, yeah, so that you're referencing is our telestroke program that we launched in 2016, right? Uh, that's, okay. that's one tool to help okay. with that. So the telestroke is essentially a simple way of uh, communicating by video and doing an exam or evaluation of a patient by video oh, wow. uh, remotely and allowing a stroke expert who that is in our center, and uh, we have several of them, to communicate with other emergency rooms, departments, okay. and hospitals that are remote that do not have these capabilities but want to take care of stroke. So uh, we communicate with them when they have a stroke and we evaluate those patients and help them decide treating them locally. Uh, and in addition to that, whether they need to come here or to any other hospital to get additional treatments that are not provided by that hospital. By doing that, we increase the capabilities of these smaller hospitals mm -hmm. to deal with stroke, improve patient care by providing them with the best availabilities locally and when they come here as well. Right, because timing is exactly. everything and is key, right? Yeah, um, and, and in addition to that, we have tremendous ways these days to treat stroke. We have uh, two treatments that are uh, very effective. So within four and a half hours, uh, intravenous TPA can be given to reverse a stroke. Wow. 
And for up to 24 hours in eligible patients, we have thrombectomy that can reverse dramatically uh, the deficits from stroke and prevent disability. Okay. Um, that's, yeah, let's talk about kind of the disability um, that comes with having a stroke because uh, yeah. I didn't realize it was, it's one of the top reasons for disability across the United States. So exactly. timing is everything. Um, what else should people know about that? Timing is essential. Call 911 when you suspect mm -hmm. a stroke or fear you have a stroke or fear someone is having a stroke. Do not drive them. That is not the most effective way. Yep. Try to take them or have them go to a hospital that is dedicated and organized to meet the needs for patients with stroke. And each hospital has different capabilities, uh, but at least if they get to the hospital that is dedicated to dealing with stroke, then they have ways to arrange for additional treatments. Uh, but the key is timing, yep. and uh, as we say, time is brain. The, the less time you spend, the more brain you gain. Uh, so uh, that is ex essential to do, uh, to do that. Um, for preventing disability, of course, the, we have effective treatment to, mm -hmm. for stroke to reversing the deficits from a stroke. But it's even better if you prevent a stroke from happening, happening. in the first place. Sure. That is even more effective at preventing disability. Sure. So dealing with the risk factors that we mentioned is uh, extremely helpful. If you have a stroke, then know how you're going to face it, especially if you know that you are at risk for a stroke. You need to know which hospital is ready to deal with that if it happens to you. Very um, exactly. Uh, and of course, if someone has a stroke, they need to go to a rehab uh, hospital. And uh, we have, we work with all the rehabilitation institutions around the area. And, uh, and that is essential for recovery and returning back to a normal or as good as normal functioning. To have your best outcome, right? Exactly. Great. Well, that concludes the chat. I don't think we have any other additional questions. So, Dr. Fayad, thank you again so much for joining us well, today. Thank you. Uh, and if you need to find a Nebraska medicine clinic near you, go ahead and call 800-922-0000 or visit us online at nebraskamed.com.